Hello, everybody. Wind Dunes here. Um, I figured I would just introduce myself and describe a little bit my plans for uh, this YouTube channel. Um, COVID-19 is awful and has uh, affected everybody's life in pretty significant ways, um, you know, some more than others and some in different ways compared to others, but everybody for sure has been impacted by that whole situation. Um, so what I've taken to do is growing psilocybin mushrooms. And um, this isn't the beginning of my grow. I've had a few grows since before the start of this video. Um, I've had success with it. Uh, I've been expanding my equipment that I've got and the range of spores uh, um, the strain, the, the spore strains that I've expanded with trying to, there are multiple species of psilocybin mushrooms. I'm trying to cultivate, uh, a few of them, which require, uh, a different, uh, uh, different substrates and different, uh, um, conditions as for, for each of them to flourish in, but we're going to get into that later. Uh, right now, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I am not an expert by any means. I watched videos on YouTube to, uh, to, to learn what I already know about growing psilocybin. Uh, channels have popped up in the last year with people who are a lot more experienced than myself, uh, that I've learned from, learned from very recently. The, the Philly Golden Teacher is a channel that I've watched. I don't, I don't have any affiliation with this person. Uh, but I have high respect for what he knows, and uh, I will be trying to duplicate methods that this person has put forward, uh, as far, especially with the agar media that um, I've bought supplies recently uh, for uh, for learning to do to cultivate mushrooms, but using you know isolating particular genetic types with uh, agar media is what the uh, what I'm going to be documenting. Um, over the next however long. This is something that I plan to be doing for quite a bit of time, uh, making mushrooms available to my immediate community uh, for free. Uh, it's a, a powerful experience to be had and I feel like it needs to be available for anybody who has any amount of interest in it whatsoever and for, uh, for free, you know, we're not, you know, it just needs to be free. And uh, that that's, you know, that's just my belief, at least, and that's my feeling with it. And uh, uh, I will do what I can uh, to make the very best stuff available to anybody who wants it. So um, let's get started with what I purchased and uh, what I have, the issues that I've been having with the grows that are going on currently, and um, what I plan to do to try to improve uh, uh with my results. So let's, let's check it out. These three containers right here are my fruiting chambers for the, uh, to fruit the mushrooms out of the mycelium. Um, the first one that I had was this one that I had the most success with, but just not enough room really to, uh, to have as many Tupperware containers inside that as, as possible for yielding the most mushrooms. Um, so that was number one. I did have success with, with, with the yields a lot more than what we're about to see here in just a second. This right here is container number one. I'll show you what I'm working with. Okay. So I lined, obviously I'm working with a, uh, this has got contamination on it. I'll be throwing it out. Uh, I, you know, I am not perfect at this by any means. So. I, uh, I'm hoping with the people that, that actually see this that I can either get comments or anything with just advice or, you know, because I, I do, I read a lot of stuff online. There's videos that people have. Everybody's got, you know, a little bit of different, you know, differing opinions on how to go about it. I've got some money as far as being able to purchase for, uh, you know, equipment sake, but I don't, uh, as far as being able to have like a, um, whatchamacallit, a uh, a HEPA filter, like a whole vacuum HEPA filter system. I don't have the means to do that at the moment right now. Uh, so I'm trying to get the best yields that I can without having that as a possibility. I line the whole bottom of this with perlite. Uh, it's still pretty damp. This is a few weeks old, so it's, uh, it's losing some of the moisture. Um, but uh, I, I had this covered with foil for 
um, for probably the first two weeks after I transferred the culture from the jars. Uh, and, uh, it seemed to be, seemed to be going fine, um, for the first couple of weeks. I don't know. I mean, if you can see, there are a couple of little pins growing, um, but, you know, for the most part, you know, actually for, you know, this is a trashed, uh, you know, this, this container is pretty much trashed, but I am just trying to learn what to do. I had this placed in here covered with foil. I would, you know, I'd take the, the, this lid off every day, air it out. Um, it, it seemed as though when I transferred it from the jar that the culture was strong enough that it wouldn't receive contamination after, uh, you know, I, I, uh, sterilized the, um, the vermiculite on the surface and I, um, you know, I tried, I tried to take all the steps, but this one got contaminated anyway onto the next container. I, uh, I got him around the time of my first harvest uh, back in July, and uh, so there wasn't as many uh, pollen uh, germs floating around uh, before my first harvest. So uh, anyway, back to the uh, other container over here. Uh, let me show you what we're working with right here. Okay. Same, okay, so same sort of lining. Uh, of the uh, of the perlite, this one is I added. I got this container a lot more recently than the other one, but uh, as you can see, the water is beating up on the sides. I don't have a high. I don't have a uh, a hygrometer uh, to to tell me exactly what the the percentage of the humidity is in the air at the moment. Um, but I, from what I understand, the percentages are around the right area if you've got water beating up around the sides. So, um, anyway, this right here is starting to fruit a little bit. Okay, we got a couple of couple of thingy. Wait, sorry, uh, sorry for the shitty camera work. I'm, I'm you know, I've got a. So you got a little thing sprouting up over there. Got a little thing sprouting up right here. All right. Uh, looks like it's uh, leucistic or uh, albino. This uh, this came from uh, a uh, uh, a Thai lipa yai, uh, Salasabi cubensis. Uh, uh, let me show you the. Uh, hold on. Let's pause the video. All right. So this little guy started out as a, uh, a Thailand Kosamoy uh, spore initially. I've got a variation of different spores that I'm gonna be working with here. We've got the Rusty White, Golden Teacher, a little standard, double A plus albino, even though these allegedly aren't supposed to be albino. But what we do working with, what we also are also working with here is uh, albino penis envy and the big dogs, uh, Hammond's, uh, yeah, psilocybe as our essence. So these are gonna be uh, cultivated on wood chips, whereas these, the rest of these, are gonna be cultivated on rye, um, which which is what I'm working with here. This is rye substrate uh, with the vermiculite as the... Uh, if, oh, hello, little kitty. See, he's gonna be the reason that a lot of these get contaminated, but, um, you know. I'm doing the best that I can without actually having a goddamn scientific laboratory. Um, anyway, so we've got this guy. I need better yields than that. We're gonna need better yields than that to give mushrooms to the community. So, um, and we can't be having little contaminated fiascos like that over there. So what I did recently was the point of all of this was, ooh, um, okay, so I've got potato flakes. I've got uh, like Philly, t uh, the Philly Golden Teacher recommended the uh, the Agar Agar uh, telephone brand. Uh, got these off of Amazon, not to promote anything or be doofy like that, but just to be honest, that's where I got the potato flakes and the Agar. Uh, I got the temperature gun uh, for after you uh, pressurize uh, or sterilize the Agar media in the whatever in the pressure cooker. We're gonna use the temperature gun, Kitty. 
to uh to know when to pour the agar so that it's because i guess it starts solidifying a little bit beneath uh, 110 degrees and um uh so we're gonna use the temperature gun so that we know what's up anyway so i went to uh, harbor freight and bought this little sandblasting box um i'm gonna be using micro pour tape to cover up this little hole right there but the cool thing is is you can just put all of the equipment uh that you're gonna be working with here hang on jesus now that i got that ledge open or whatever that i got the door open this is gonna be my little glove box area for uh for pouring the agar and transferring culture um i didn't have any of this uh i didn't have this before a couple of days ago so all of the jars that i'm about to show you uh were uh were um, inoculated basically in open air on this counter. And um, so I'll show you what I've got. Who knows if they're contaminated or not, uh, but all of the work from here on, you know, whatever. Let's go to the next video. The jars that I have inoculated right now. So you just got like a top down view. I'm gonna be placing this on the counter and then I'll show you each one of them or not. I guess I can just show you right here. All right, starting from some of the worst ones. All right, we've got, so this one was inoculated. This is rusty white. This is, you know, you can see some of the things right here. It's been shaken up. It's been a few days since since I shook it up. It doesn't seem to be, uh, uh, there doesn't seem to be too much growth happening. There was initially, and I actually transferred some of these to a jar, but it doesn't look like a whole bunch of continued mycelium growth from that one. All right. So this is the uh, the double A plus, and this is this is all from a multi spore inoculation. This is not I haven't isolated any genetic type uh, as of yet. This is what I there's I've I've learned steps that I need to do to do it using agar media, and I'm going to be filming my first attempts at doing it. These are my first attempts at doing the or this is just like five and sixth attempt at doing the multi-spore inoculation, but I haven't been having as much success with it. Another A plus thing, doesn't look like a whole bunch of growth. It's been shaken up a bunch of times, but it doesn't seem to be having a whole bunch of uh, new growth. So let's see what else. A lot of these are like this. This is the rusty white. Another one, not getting a whole bunch of growth after shaking it up. It's been like three or four days. But once you get uh, initially some aggressive growth, um, even after shaking it up, it only takes like 24 hours. Like this has got a little bit. This is uh, the Paneolus cyanescens, actually. So this is like a whole different, whole different dealio than the Salasa bicubensis. Um, I haven't had any. I haven't had any success fruiting these yet. But you can see the mycelium growth is a little bit stronger on this. Uh, what else? Got another Paneolus cyanescens uh, jar, not very good growth. All right, here's the ones that I just inoculated recently that seem to have some promising growth. Ba-bam, golden teacher right here. Ah, that looks like good, solid, fresh growth. This is from a multi-spore, so we'll, you know, I, it's, you know, there might not be very many good fruits that ultimately come out of this one, but uh, that looks promising so far, in my opinion. I'm not an expert yet, but based off of what I've seen so far, that's good looking stuff. So, uh, ba bam This one took off like nuts. These were inoculated at the exact same time. And this is uh, the Cambodian, uh, the Cambodian, yeah, the, the Cubens is from Cambodia, uh, allegedly. So, but you can see a much more aggressive mycelium growth. Here's the other one of that, Cambodian. Very, uh, oh wow, oh wow, look at that shit right there. That is good stuff right there. That should, this should be a good fruiting jar. At least a few good fruits. That's stuff that we want right there. If I could isolate the shit out of that right now, I would, but I can't because I don't have it in agar media. This is a multi-spore 
And that's the problem that we run into right there. We can't isolate them because they're in the fucking jaw right there and I can't cut it out with a, uh, yeah, can't cut it out with a scalpel that's gonna come in the mail tomorrow. So, what else we got? Here's the other golden feature jar. Ooh, man, these are looking good. Good, 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 good. Oh my goodness. Ooh, yeah. So I haven't shaken these up yet at all. This is how they look after initial inoculation. Let me show you what I've been. Okay, so these ones, I got the plastic ball lid and did poke the holes in it and did the whole thing that way. Whoa, let me show you some other stuff that I'm working with. Other problems that I've run into is that when you use the metal lids, they rust over time. And if you try to reuse these uh, with the rust on them like that, you get funky uh, you get funky stuff happening. That one wasn't even a reused one. I think one a few of these are, if I'm not mistaken, maybe not. The point is though, is that over time that these start to rust, so you have to either have to replace them. Or you did, like what I've done was get the plastic lid, something that's not going to get any rust building up, and hopefully we'll have some success with uh, with with the plastic lids from here on out. I've got a bunch more of them, but I've just I was I was going to take what I've learned from these mess ups over here with the stuff that's clearly not going that well, you know, better success over here and. With uh, we're gonna be doing the agar media. We got our potato flakes, the agar media, the uh, the place to pour it all. Uh, I did um, so. I'm gonna be uh, the next. Uh, yeah, the next videos that I do will be of me um, of me uh, mixing up the stuff for the agar media uh, pressure, putting it into the pressure cooker. And uh, we'll set up the camera inside the uh, the little sandblaster box here. Uh, see if I can rig that up somehow. And we'll see if I can get some uh, video of doing the, the agar pours and uh, inoculating the agar with the spores as well. Um, and, uh, you know, and as the spores develop, um, like I said, I want to document each step of the way, you know, so we can see where we have the mess ups, where we have, you know, how it's done successfully. And um, it should be a fun thing. It'll be, I haven't had very many ways lately to have a creative outlet and there, you know, I like to be a creative person if I can be. I'm, I'm way into the mushroom experience and I'm trying to figure out ways to mesh all of the, the things, you know, how to creatively, express myself in the process of my love for the psilocybin mushroom experience. So I'm going to do the best that I can. Uh, like I said, I'm not the ultimate expert. I I've learned as much as I can and we'll go with, an, I, you know, based off of what I've learned so far, even though I might be wrong in some places, I might not ultimately have the best knowledge. I'm going to put forth what I know and it, Whoever comes across this video, watches it, if they know a better way, leave a comment. Let me know how to do it right. If you've got any tips, you know, I don't need anybody to be a dick. Uh, as for, you know what I mean? I don't need smart ass stuff from people because this is something that I'm genuinely passionate about. And uh, I, you know, I wanna do my best to, to document each step of the way, me and little kitty over here. And um, yeah, so, um, so thanks for watching. Uh, this will, hopefully be the sloppiest aspect of, of the whole documentation process. Uh, just my sort of uh, me introducing myself and kind of letting you know with where I'm at so far and what my plan to do is. Cause I want to isolate awesome genetics out of the spores and get really good mushroom flushes and give them to, you know, give them away. I want to give them out to anybody who wants them, but uh, I want to, I want to learn and I want to document my learning process of becoming a master, uh, whatever, mycologist, mushroom cultivator guy. So thank you for watching.